Hi guys, so today I wanted to talk about the process of buying horses and trying horses that you don't know. Um, there's a lot of experience that we have buying horses and I think it's important to talk about that and share that with you guys so that as you're trying horses to buy, um, you can have a better experience with it. So this is Guapo. This isn't the horse that I'm trying to buy. He's like one of my favorites. Um, licensed stallion, five-year-old. But um, I'll just share with you guys some thoughts and just behind the camera as well is mic'd up and so she can flip it around and talk to you guys. Um, I'll go ahead and get on, but obviously every time you try a horse, you wanna watch the rider uh, that's riding the horse first. Never get on a horse that you don't know first without getting uh, shown the horse. That's really important because safety in these environments is really important. A lot of times the market gets filled up with horses that people don't want or that are spooky or difficult. Um, and so you have to be really careful when you're trying horses because it can be dangerous. But obviously I know Guapo. I'm going to touch him on his butt here. Uh, touch him here. See if there's any spooky movement. Um, pull the saddle around a little bit. Touch him on his butt. I don't have any warning signs. Try to be in tune with yourself. If you have warning signs. Um, trust yourself. Trust yourself. Right. And you guys can't see this, but Guapo's kind of been looking because we have three puppies running around. And that's a good indicator that he's not really bothered by them. He's right. just kind of looking at them, but for you to be aware that if that, something's going on and they're checking it out, you just kind of look at their body language and is he afraid or is he just looking? Obviously, he doesn't look afraid or spooked out at all. Um, actually, don't think he has it in him, but <laughs> others certainly do. Yeah. Okay, and then, yeah, when you sit Peppa on, you wanna, out. Peppa. you wanna have your reins short um, and Make sure that you have a connection because, like I said, if they're not used to a new person or spooky or going to be difficult, you want to be prepared to handle that. Um, and then right away, you're just going into the receptive mode of feeling the horse and feeling uh, what they're like mentally, what the gates are like. Uh, oftentimes, horses feel very different than they look. So you'll watch a rider uh, ride a horse and then you'll get on and it will feel very different than you look. The feeling is very, very important to me when I'm buying a horse. Um, to chime in here, as you are watching someone ride the horse or warm it up or show you, you know, what the horse is capable of, if you've already seen a sales video showing all the good stuff, then you know what the horse can do um, with the right rider or with the right person on top. So that's just kind of you keep that in mind, shelf it in your brain. And usually when you're showing a horse, they're just going to show, warm the horse up, show a couple of things so that they allow you to kind of press around in your own way, especially if you come with a trainer, because they don't want to burn the horse out before your trainer gets on and then you get on. Three people on a horse, no matter the horse, is, is a lot for most horses when you're trying a horse. Right. And just from an amateur perspective, something to keep in mind, many of us amateurs, what we do when we're trying a horse is you're obviously physically and emotionally nervous and you get on the horse and you grip your legs really tight and that usually makes it worse like if you have a horse that's a little bit spooky or tight backed and you get on hard and you grip them that might give them the wrong information so you have to get on kind of soft and have a little bit of feel like how did the horse feel when you got on and honestly if you get on and you feel like this is not for me there's no point in riding the horse, get right. off. A hundred percent. Like that's something that I feel like people do a lot. They'll come, they'll ride just cause it's fun. They're already here, get on. Um, I think that's a mistake. If it's not the right horse for you, if you don't like the horse, don't get on. Don't have your trainer get on. Right, I feel like sometimes people are afraid to offend the sellers. And the truth of the matter is, it's much better for the sellers if you're not interested in a horse, not, not to, to get on it. in the first place or um, simply to get off as soon as you know that the horse isn't for you. The sellers uh, should be receptive to that um, and you should be able to do that without any trouble. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is I'm a professional rider, I do this for a living, I've tried thousands of horses and it's still difficult for me. So be easy on yourself. 
it's not easy getting on a horse that you don't know and riding it for the first time in front of a bunch of people watching with a bunch of pressure. Um, and so it's important to kind of understand that and go easy on yourself and understand that dressage is a language between the horse and the rider. And the expectation that that language is going to be seamless the first day that you sit on the horse is simply not the case. It's not the case for a professional. It's not the case for an amateur. And so it's really important that you aren't evaluating things as if they need to be perfect. I think a lot of dressage riders are perfectionistic, but it's important that we evaluate things based on the potential of what it could be. Uh, also, that's really another important. another thing that I want to chime in on, um, be a little bit aware of like the surroundings, the time of day, the activity. Um, I think it's easy to, like for example, it doesn't look right now on the phone like it's cold or windy. That said, we had a giant storm all last night and this morning and it just cleared up. So the arena is wet and soggy the horses were inside it was pouring rain so keep that in mind like if the horse is a little bit fresh oh it's you know monday this horse hasn't been ridden for two days and we had a storm okay kind of keep that in mind or if you're trying a horse on a saturday and it's been ridden five days before and it's a little bit tired you know keep that in mind okay that the horse is a little bit tired so don't just judge it just on that tiny glimpse that you have. Ask questions and, you know, ideally you're working with a seller that you trust or that has a good reputation and when you ask the questions, they're answered honestly and that gives you a bigger picture. So right. I'll just kind of chime in here. So Joseph is kind of pretending that he's trying a horse. So what he did is he got on, he checked that the horse seemed okay with it. He walked him around, made sure that he didn't feel tight, that he felt comfortable with him. And he's riding him obviously very just like loosey goosey, just seeing how the horse is. He didn't get on and just kick or pull or, you know, try and do a million things in the first couple minutes. Right, it's important that you don't have abrupt movements you don't want to surprise the horse. You're trying to test out how this horse is, but I try to ride honestly as quietly as possible and as seamlessly as possible. Um, if the horse is going to be spooky or I'm going to test that out, I'm going to test that out at the very end of my ride, shifting my body weight around, moving my hands around. At the beginning of the ride, I'm going to be quiet and try to get with my horse and develop the throughness. Um, but I'll get there. And it's really important to me, the self-carriage, the ease of the ride. So just take your time as if you're warming the horse up, get to know the horse and try the walk, the trot and the canter. See if you can get that in self-carriage and evaluate the three gates. See what the three gates, the quality in the three gates are. Because remember, the basics really are, are key. Um, there's many, many horses that have a show record or don't have a show record, and that's not always an indicator of whether or not you or your client will necessarily be able to ride the horse where it was shown prior. That's very, very cold out. I'm only wearing a sweater and I'm kind of freezing. So Influencer is a very, very easy horse, um, very, very good horse. feeling there. Um, he isn't always the best one to poke and prob on finding errors in him. But, you know, as the ride continues, Joseph can talk to you a little bit about like what we do when we try them or look for them. And, you know, when we get off a horse that we tried, if it's a horse that we like, again, if it's a horse we're not interested in, don't even bother. But if it's a horse that you really liked, you can, you know, proceed to take the tack off, the wraps off, everything, and then just take a full view of what the horse looks like without anything on. Something else that's for me personally important is, you know, what their demeanor is on the ground. Are they friendly and cuddly? And do I like the personality of the horse? 
So good feeling there. Those like the foundation, the basics, right? Walk, trot, canter, contact, connection. Those fundamentals, temperament, character, um, spookiness, rideability. rideability. Those things, how he is mentally, how the energy level feels, those things are my foundation that's gonna enable me to train the horse up through the levels. For me, dressage means training, and I'm interested in acquiring this horse to train it and enjoy the process of training it. I'm not just buying a car here. I'm trying to buy a partnership that I'm willing to develop. And so understanding the fundamental of, of those pieces are really important. Now, if, like Jess said earlier, if I've seen the sales video and I see that he does the counter canner, that may mean that I don't even need to try the counter canner. Um, for me, it's not important to me. I know the horse is gonna do counter canner. I'm trying to evaluate the feeling. Maybe I'll try the leg yield, see how he responds to the aids. Um, I'll try some other things, but it's not important for me to try the counter canner. And I'm gonna chime in on something that we see a lot. So, and this happens often with more trained horses or horses that even at a younger age do clean changes. Um, we often have horses that do great changes or great tempi changes. And when somebody tries the horse, they struggle with it. And that's actually quite common. I think people sometimes get embarrassed or right. feel like the horse can't do it. And quite frankly, the changes are very personal. The horses are used to your leg length. They're used to your cues. And that's something that as you ride a horse, you know, five, six or seven times in the row, they will adjust to your cue. So knowing that the horse is able to do it, whether it's a, a single change or a, a series, you just want to test that they kind of understand you, but know that you're going to have to reset those buttons on your, in your own way. Even if the horse is what people call push button, there's really never such a thing. Horses do get confused. We've had Grand Prix horses shown many, many times over that when someone tries them, you know, they can't get the two tempies because the horse thinks it wants one tempies or things like that. And it's not that it's not there. It's that you, there is some sort of adjustment period to the more personal pieces of the ride, which in my opinion, the changes are one of the most personal. A hundred percent agree with that. The changes are very, uh, very personal and something that uh, you may want to feel them or try them. But again, if, if you're seeing very quality on the video or you've seen the rider before you do them, sometimes it takes some time to develop it for yourself. Any other thoughts? No. Guapo, you're the best. Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's kind of a, just some thoughts on trying horses. That's obviously we can't in, capture all of it uh, in one video. But I think it's really nice to have this conversation about buying horses. And we have a lot of experience doing it. We're lucky to be on the buying and the selling end of it. And um, yeah, I think it's worth drawing on other people's experience to get as good as we can. When we buy a horse, usually we don't have a ton of opportunities to buy our dream horse. And so um, it's important to try to make the most of it when we do buy a horse.